What's up guys? Welcome back. Okay, I've been missing for quite a few weeks now. I think it's like two weeks if I'm not mistaken. But it's been like quite a while. I mean, my life has been very hectic. I've had like a lot of tests and assignments and like a lot of like university things. And I just haven't had time to film and edit and record. Um, yeah, but thanks for you guys who, uh, who actually have stuck around. I lost a fair few subscribers. But you know what? They're lost. Okay, but that's what my life is has been like for the last two weeks, been quite hectic, got a new haircut, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm looking a bit like neater compared to what my hair was, okay, um, but it, like in terms of Liverpool, right, last night it was a disappointment, like there was like so much build up to the game and so much like hype around the game, how it's going to be a, a crash clash, a mega clash between two, two titans of the game, you know, and that's what what we were all expecting, to be honest with you. Liverpool fans, United fans, and neutrals were hoping for a cracking game where there's a lot of like, like, like mad tackles, a lot of like anger, a lot of like tempers boiling over, a lot of chances, a lot of goals, you know, and just a very, very good spectacle to watch. And unfortunately, that was not the case. But the thing is, why did we ever think elsewise? Elsewise. Why do we ever think, yeah, that's right. Why do we ever think elsewise? Is that a word? Is that even a word? Okay. When Jose Mourinho is the manager, okay, time and time again he's proven I'm gonna sit deep, I'm gonna have a bank of six, a bank of three, one, two, and that's how he's gonna set up. Always as the away side, he never loses big games. He's known for that. He's known for that type of football. So why did we ever think that the game would be any different? Okay, so basically going into the game, I was like excited, excited but nervous. Like I knew the repercussions if Liverpool actually lost. Right now, Liverpool are flying and, we, and we're scoring goals and our attack is so fluid and we're looking good. Okay, and unfortunately that was missing last night. And I think that was all down to Jose Mourinho's tactics. But the highest compliment that I can actually give Liverpool from last night is by Jose Mourinho coming with six at the back. He knows Liverpool are title contenders for the season. And if we learn something about last night, is he's threatened by Liverpool, he's threatened by Liverpool's attack, and Jurgen Klopp has done well to do so. For once, guys, we actually look a threat. For once now, teams are actually, wow, okay, Liverpool have a good attack. Let me like not get exposed. You know, and that reminds me back in the 13-14 when we were scoring goals for fun. And it was just a disappointment that we couldn't break them down. I mean, there were a few times where like we had bad passes and like bad uh, bad moments in the game. But I think it was also down to, to uh, Jose Mourinho's tactics. He's a tactician, you know. But the thing is, how can you be happy with your manager playing those kind of tactics? I mean, like let's look back to last season, right? When, uh, when Klopp went to Villarreal with such an offensive mindset and I was furious. I was furious because the thing is you never want your team to just settle for the draw. Like, like, like you can't do any better than settle for a draw. Nah, that's bullshit. And I think Mourinho ruined the game in that, I mean, that aspect. But the thing is it was still down to Liverpool to break them down, try to find the right combinations and you know get in wide, get those crosses in there. But we never actually managed to do so. I think that was also down to a few injuries and why now the Van Lallana, which actually I think hampered us a lot. You know, like, like that midfield three was not working. You can't have Coutinho there in that midfield role. He's just not suited there. And you know, like, like I find when he's too deep, he doesn't really contribute to the player. And I think that was also a big miss. He doesn't re like really like running behind like Lallana does or Wijnaldum does. And I think that was, that, was, that was quite a big miss. Chan was very, very rusty. But it's kind of expected. He hasn't been playing games recently. And, you know, like that's kind of expected. Then the back four was so, so solid. Really looking good, that back four at the moment. They weren't really troubled, except that one brilliant cross by Pogba. But you can't really, like, kind of defend against such a good ball like that. Karius, again, he's shaky. I don't, I don't know what's wrong with him. Maybe he's lacking confidence or I don't know. But my, my God, he is stressing me the fuck out. Oh, he can't pass the ball out from the back. That's his main strength. Well, meant to be his main strength. And he can't even do that. Guys, for me, he looks flustered. He looks like he gets nervous. He looks like he's really like intimidated. But that's not what we bought him for. We bought him for distribution. We bought him to play out from the back. That's his strength, or meant to be. And the things, I think Minion right now, could feel a little bit hard done by. I know we have to give Karius time, he's still settling into a new league, a new team, new defense, but guys, that's his strength, that's his like bread and butter. And I felt last night that didn't happen at all. 
Then Daniel Sturridge again, he's like this myth, this legend. I was, I thought at the beginning of the season, and I said it countless times, that I thought this was Daniel Sturridge's season. I really believe so. And I think it's not so much that Daniel Sturridge is playing badly, it's I think he doesn't know where, where he needs to be in the side, if I'm honest. When you see uh, Firmino playing up top, he knows his role. He knows to press, he knows to get the ball uh, deeper, but Sturridge does neither of those. So I don't think he quite understands his role, and I, I don't think you can question his his attitude or his uh, commitment to the side, because that would be very wrong of you. But I do think we have a right in our question whether or not he does actually suit um, a Jurgen Klopp style. Only time will tell. But I think it won't be too long before he scores again. I think he's lacking confidence and lacking belief, and he's actually having like a bit of like second doubt in his mind when he's playing, and that always is a big hampering factor. You know, but like back to the overall game, I was actually quite disappointed with how he set out. I thought with the two holding midfielders, I didn't quite like that. I thought that Henderson alone was was good enough to um to suppress just one knockdown from Zlatan to, to Pogba, but Klopp felt he needed to Chan and and Henderson and that and that for me I think was also a big hindering factor we never have runners in behind and against a team that has a bank of six a bank of three you need runners in behind someone who's, who's going to stretch that defense in all areas you know and as soon as the Lana came on that's exactly what happened breaks the line well runs for it creates new and uh, new lines and uh, that's when our two main chances came Emre Chan and Coutinho and unfortunately guys Man United once a fucking get have the hair. I don't know where he's come from, but I, I, in my humble opinion, okay, I believe he could be the best keeper in the world. I mean, no, I mean that save from Coutinho. Oh my God! Any other keeper in the league, that would have been a goal, hands down. What a save! Like that's the type of save that you need a goalkeeper to make in these big games. And Liverpool, I feel, don't have that keeper yet. Maybe Karras is that boy. Right now we don't have that. And that's why United, I felt, came away with a draw. And uh, I think it's a big statement of Liverpool's intent this season that like a lot of the pundits were like quite disappointed with their, with their attacking threat and, uh, and, uh, and they were like a little bit let down. Guys, that signals Liverpool's intention. Liverpool are a force to be reckoned with this season. I'm losing my voice, I don't even know why. But Liverpool are a force to be reckoned with this season. Like, let's make no mistake about it. And uh, I think it's one of those games where it wasn't quite going right. Passes weren't going right, touches weren't going right. I mean, like Firmino's one-on-one, -on -one, he should have slotted a poor touch into the box and allowed Valencia to come in there. But guys, those are the small chances you have to take in these big, tight games. And it, and it wasn't to be, it happened. Um, but 0-0 versus Man United, and we move on. West Brom now, up next at home. Time to put it right, West Brom are gonna do the exact same thing as what Man United did, bank of six, bank of three, and it's up now to Jurgen Klopp and the boys to try and find that right solution. We need to put it right. And guys, if we are to be title containers this season, those are the type of games you have to break down and win them. It's that simple. Also guys, I have got, I think, quite a cool video coming up very, very soon. Finally, after months of talking about it, I have a FIFA video, okay? I've got a career mode that I'm gonna start and uh, hope you guys are gonna enjoy that. But yeah, thanks for watching again, guys. Much appreciated, and I'll catch you soon. I'll wait. See you. I don't even know like what my outro is, but uh, yeah, see ya.